All right, I'm here with uh, Jeremiah Grossman, founder and CTO of White Hat Security. How are you doing today, Jeremiah? Doing very well, thank you. All right. Uh, uh, so we were just talking briefly about uh, you know the challenges of uh, communicating the value of security upstream to the C level to the board level, uh, connecting security to the business, making it an enabler. Uh, what kind of advice can you give people on that? Sure, that's an important subject. You know, for the last decade, information security is most about cost avoidance or loss avoidance. You know, trying to make sure when bad things happen, you don't lose too much money or go out of business. Now it's different. Now that security is headline news every single day, a lot of customers of big companies and small companies alike are asking. How secure is my data? How secure are my systems when I do business with you? So a lot of times now that security can actually increase the top line where companies can compete based on the security of their offerings. Okay, so uh, uh, you know, big challenge is, is you know, we throw a lot of data at these guys. Uh, they speak the language of business. We're talking, you know, much more technical level. Uh, how can we break it down a little bit better to make it, uh, you know, I guess more digestible for the C level? Well, that's a, that's a good question. So it really comes down to the value of the asset that we're protecting. Are we detecting a billion dollar asset, billion dollars in revenue, or something worth a hundred million? So when we find something wrong with the system, it's how much damage can this vulnerability or this flaw in the system cause us? You know, is it a day of downtime, a week of downtime, or worse? What is the brand damage? So we speak in dollars and cents and likelihood and probability. I think we'll make a much more, much more headway and really start to justify the things that we're doing to secure these systems. As far as uh, metrics, what, what, what have you seen? Uh, uh, what's the kind of thing that the C-level really responds to? So at, at White Hat, we do mostly website security. So when we track metrics, it's usually in terms of numbers of vulnerabilities per release cycle. It's how fast you're fixing vulnerabilities and the percentage of them that you're actually fixing. And so if you can show the business that they're improving over time and they're doing as good, worse, or better than their peers, they could see what is the ROI that we're investing in security and what are we getting back? How secure do we need to be? And they really respond to that. So this really touches on uh, you know the changing role of, uh, of the CISO. They've uh, uh, you know got a spot at the table now. Uh, they're being listened to now. They're under a tremendous amount of pressure uh, to you know communicate that return on investment for security. Um, what are you seeing as, as strategic ways that they can uh, better communicate that? Uh, it's, it's to learn, it's, as you said, it's to learn the language of the business. They're after dollars and cents. You know, how do we meet uh, projections for next quarter? How do we better serve our customers? And then they can still speak tech to the CIO and the engineers below them. But as long as they're talking in terms that the business understands, we need to do X because it's going to equate to more business and more customers, they'll get 100 miles farther. Yeah, and then uh, shift gears really quick, uh, you did a presentation at Black Hat. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure, that was a really fun presentation. So for years, myself and others have been showing, when you visit a website with your browser, how much control that website has over your browser to make, to force your browser to make a request to any place in the world, any type of request. And that's just basically how the web is designed to work. So now what we did was, when we can distribute code via an advertising network, you pay 50 cents per thousand uh, impressions or thousand browsers, and you can roll out your JavaScript malware through an advertising network to people's browsers. The trick is, is this is not conventional malware that exploits your operating system. This is just general JavaScript, so you can point a hundred, a thousand, ten thousand, a million browsers all at one spot and denial of service at it, for, denial of service the system for mere pennies. And is this a, a, an active exploit that's being uh, used out in the wild? So it's not, it's actually, that's the interesting part. That was the part that made it really, really interesting and kind of scary is that it's not an exploit. This is the way the web is designed to work. And it's not immediately clear whose fault it is. It's not the browser vendor's fault. It's not the advertising network's fault. It's it's not the user's fault. This is the way the web was designed. So we kind of push the issue out there and say, you know, this is the problem. We might have to deal with it today, but it might be useless to get us tomorrow. So let's start thinking in this direction. Okay, so, so there is uh, an option for remediation, anything uh, uh, immediate that you can see as a solution? So with respect to just uh, denial of service, uh, what we have found, our conclusion today is that if you're running a website with no DDoS protection, you can get taken out for just mere mere pennies. It's really not that difficult. So DDoS protection is probably going to be essential for e-commerce right now. If you don't have DDoS protection, you're really, really at risk. Excellent. Jeremiah, always good to run into you and uh, have a good time the rest of the week. Thank you very much for your time.